the goal of recovery or the goal of life, let's say. How about that? Because we're always in recovery. You're still in recovery from when you were born. That was pretty traumatic, wasn't it? And, and being, <laughs> we talked about this yesterday on our group call. And if you've given birth, you're still in recovery from that too. Even on a cellular level of replication, of mitosis, of the micro tears that happen throughout the day in your muscles, even if you worked out some larger tears, right? Recovering from some incident or some injury from long ago, recovering emotionally from an experience. We're always in recovery. So the goal of life is not to become normal. The goal is to deeply embrace the vocation of being human. Want that one once more? The goal of recovery is not to become normal. The goal is to deeply embrace the vocation of being human. Let's break this down and let's talk about turning life's pages and the classic line, be not afraid, fear not, which is written hundreds of times in the Bible. Hundreds and hundreds. Feel free to take a look. I think when we talk about embracing humanity and embracing who you are and ourselves as a species, one of the most innate feelings, the one that's evolved over time is being afraid, is being fearful. It's kept us alive for so long. And what if you were almost grateful for the fear when it comes? And grateful for being afraid. Because all of these things are our way to becoming more fully human and embracing our humanity. You know, if you just have a job, what a loser you are, right? Oh, you should have a career. Even if you have a career, what a loser you are. We were told that you should have a vocation, that every single morning you should get up and be happy and want to go to your job and it's the best thing you've ever done and you've worked so hard towards it and it, it brings all meaning to living. It's truly your vocation. <laughs> what? What a load of shit. Man, does that put stress on teenagers, people in university, college, even you right now thinking that there is something out there that you'll never achieve or you're not going to find it or you're trying so hard to chase it that you can't really be in your job right now because you're thinking there's always something better and this is just a stepping stone. I get it. I get it. And vocations do exist. But I'm not Augustus Caesar and I don't want to be the king. I don't want to be the emperor. I want to be one of the people and part of being one of the people in my kind of work is experiencing things on the exact same level. I kid you not, if I was a multi-billionaire, I'd still be in this condo and I'd still be chatting with you. Mark my words. Send me the money and I'll prove it to you. So this idea of embracing your humanity, what if that is your vocation? Does that bring you any kind of relief? Does that bring you a sense of meaning to your experiences? Think about it. What you're experiencing right now, listen closely, listen closely. Everything you're experiencing right now, everything that you are right now, everything that you're sitting with, whether you're driving, whether you're in the kitchen, listen, listen, listen. You and your body right now and you being yourself and seeing the world and seeing yourself as it is through your eyes, the truth is that you're being with everything. And you thought you couldn't, but you are right now. Think about it. Every single experience that you've ever had, every good experience up until this point, every traumatic experience, every difficult experience, every injury that you've had, every heartbreak that you've had, every failure that you've had, your inability to listen, your inability to take instructions when you slipped there and you shouldn't have, when you said that and you shouldn't have. Everything up to this point you are being with and it's part of who you are right now. 
everything that you are right now, every fear of the future that you have, every worry, everything that you're excited about is here too. Everything you're afraid of, every anxious thought, what you should be, what you could be, what steps you have to take, what steps you must take, what steps you really don't want to but you're thinking about, how that event will go, what that person thinks of you, everything. You are in it right now. Can you see that? You are in it. Yeah, sure. Most of it not on a conscious level, but it's true because that all makes up what you've become in this very moment when you're listening to me and doing whatever you're doing. It's all brought you here. And the vocation of being fully human, you know, people think the Being Human podcast, Scott, what's that about? You talk about being human. There's no other choice. Of course there is. We always want another choice. We always want to run away from it. We always do. Because when fear comes, how do I get rid of it? But fear is so human and so part of you. Oh, you know what? I'm feeling so, so anxious and oh, I feel sad. It's gross. How do I get happy again? But that's part of being human. It's part of all of it. Why do you want to get rid of that? <laughs> I'm laughing at it because I, I run away. I do too. But when we sit with it all and you really recognize that, wow, this is incredible that in my sitting and in my living and in my daily life, I am with it all. And I can do that. And if I don't reach for the cannabis or the cigarette right away, if I don't take the shot right away, I'd surprise myself with how good I am and how great I am with being with all of it. And when we talk about turning life's pages... We think about being with all of it, right? So if I have this book right here, I should get you, a, oh, let me get you a better one. Come on now. There you go. The two towers, all right? I got the two towers in my hand right now. And if I'm on page 668, and the first words are worthy of honor, who have no evil purpose, you may go in. The guards now lifted the heavy bars of the doors and swung them slowly inward, grumbling on the great hinges. Well, if I'm on page 668, I might be afraid to turn the next page because of this adventure and how exciting it is, and I don't know what's going to happen. And since I'm in the book and I'm in the middle of life, I got skin in the game. And when you have skin in the game and you care for the characters and you care for yourself, sometimes it's hard to turn that page because... If it doesn't turn out too well and something bad happens, I'm to blame and there's a lot of loss. That's part of it. That's part of embracing your vocation as well. Everything I say from now on, just say, that's part of it. That's part of it. Let me hear it. Yeah, that's part of it. All right. So looking back, chapter five, chapter four, three, two, one of the two towers, guess what? The writing's still there. When I flip back, why aren't the pages blank? I can flip back and I can reference certain characters. Those of you Game of Thrones nerds, love you. I haven't done that yet. There's so many names, so many things to remember, so many places where you have to keep referencing back. To what was that again? And what, who was that? Where did that person come from again? Wait, who killed who? Who slept with who? So the pages aren't blank. And when we turn the pages of life, sometimes we think that if we move forward, in some way, we're going to forget the past. In a lot of ways, we want to, don't we? Because bad things happen. Bad things happen. Hard things happen. Things that don't make sense happen. And they happen to you. And they happen to me. And they happen to everybody. But we come to a point in the book, in our story, our story, Where what's cool about this is, first of all, I couldn't get to page 668 if I didn't have an adventure before there. I couldn't get to this part. And this part's a really good part. Or you know what? I think a good part's coming up too. I couldn't get here without the pages. In fact, I would be so lost on page 668 if I had no freaking idea how I even got here. I don't know where I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I'm friends with. I don't know what to believe. 
because I just jumped on page 668. I'm lost. I'm absolutely lost. And when you look back at the pages that still have writing, you can actually select if you want what pages to go to. You don't always have to revisit certain ones in page 574 every single day. You don't have to. Sometimes it happens automatically and the wind just... And we wake up in the morning and we're up. Oh, there's that memory again. There's that experience. That's cool. Let it be there. But with the wind, you can work with it and flip it on your own and think of something else. When we turn life's pages, my friends, and I'm on page 668 in my life story, and I really want to make a move, and there's two things that happen. I get, I get scared and I become afraid. Or I get really, really excited and I'm bouncing. Or I'm really, really afraid and I get bouncing. And there's a classic argument of do you motivate yourself and do you move and do you act out of fear or out of faith? And to not be afraid, you think about the, the times throughout the, the books of the Bible and even in the New Testament. Jesus comes with holes in his hands and the first thing he says is, don't be afraid to his followers. <laughs> Can you imagine? Someone appears right in front of me. Someone that I've followed, someone that's passed away. And I'm freaking out and I'm probably going to call uh, the mental health hospital because I'm hallucinating and here comes some new illness that I'm not afraid of. Get me on meds. And the first thing... Don't be afraid. Just chill. Just chill. Don't be afraid. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. And when we walk through with faith sometimes in our stories and we keep turning the pages, instead of through fear, fear tells us if I turn the page, something bad is going to happen. I'm going to make a fool out of myself. I'm going to fail. I'm going to be in more pain if I turn the page than if I just stay here. I'm, so I'm going to put the bookmark in. I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to put the book in the closet. I, I don't even want to go. No, I don't want to finish it. It's too much. It's too much. The adventure is too big. There's too much risk. I got too much skin in the game. I've gone too far already. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Faith tells us, you know, if you turn that page, there will be good. There will be good. You might be in more pain, but there's going to be good from it. If you look to your left, there might be good there. To your right, there might be good there on the path as you walk by. There might be good right ahead of you. And if you look down, there might be good right there. But what faith promises you, and when you turn that page, and when you're on that path, there is always good, that's right, in you. There is always good in you. Because sometimes our surroundings are so hard and so judgmental. And the world around us seems so broken, like it's crumbling before our eyes. And how could I see any good in that, Scott? How could I walk with faith in that bullshit? I see things falling apart. And I want to fall apart with them. Mm, don't be afraid. You have good in you. And to walk with faith means to walk with the goodness that's in you. And Christ, which literally means everything. Jesus' last name wasn't Christ. It's Jesus the Christ. And if he lives in you, that means everything lives in you. And that means that you continue to be with everything. Just like you're doing right now. You step with light, my friends, not with darkness. Don't be afraid. If you want to take a break in the story for a while and in the book, be still. Be still in the goodness and rest, rest in the arms. But don't be afraid. And if you are afraid, well, same. But being afraid and acting almost is courageous and brave, right? That's what it means, acting in spite of fear. 
So you aren't actually afraid if you're not crippled by the fear. Then you're really afraid. Afraid is, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm not moving. I'm in the haunted house, but uh, I'm frozen. Being not afraid is, yeah, I'm fearful, but I'm fucking walking through that haunted house, no problem. And I'm punching zombies from left and right, and I'm making it out. That's it. And how good do you feel after punching some zombies and making it all the way through? Continue to be with all of it. The whole book up until now. Continue to turn life's pages at your own pace. And even if you're afraid sometimes, even if you get scared sometimes, enjoy the vocation of being fully human. God bless you, my friends. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for all of your comments. I'd like to thank all of the patrons that support this channel who have been so supportive of me changing the topics of the channel and still being mental health focused, but bringing in some spirituality in the mix. I'd like to thank all of them. And if you'd like to be part of supporting this channel, of fully being human and embracing that vocation, all the links are in the description below, as well as BetterHelp, where if you are in need of therapy, as I go to therapy as well, you get a discount if you use the link in the description. Thank you all so much. God bless you, and I'll see you in a week. We'll see you then.